What will the holiday season bring for the Boston Bruins in 2024-25? Today we're previewing the December and January schedule. Your Locked On Bruins, your daily podcast on the Boston Bruins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Bruins fans, and welcome back to the Locked On Boston Bruins podcast. I'm your host, Ian McLaren, and this is a daily show where we discuss all things spoke to be. Today is Thursday, July 25th, and I want to thank you so much for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine. Free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. This summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. Before we get started, a quick reminder, you can find the podcast on social media at LockedNHLBruins. And you can find me, my hockey thoughts and dad jokes at Ian C. McLaren. Earlier this week, we looked at what October will bring for the Bruins, a much more difficult schedule than last season. Couple that with the subtraction of Linus Ulmark and the addition of Eunice Corpusalo and the pending contract for Jeremy Swayman, uh, and it will be really incumbent on the Bruins to get off to a good start. November is going to be an emotional one with the returns of Mark and Jake DeBrusque with visits by the Ottawa Senators and Vancouver Canucks. And uh, today we're going to look at the schedule for December and January to see what holds uh, in those months. Now we're not going to go game by game, but last season the Bruins went 16, 5, and 6 in 27 games between December and January. That was a 704 point percentage, which was uh, good for the fourth best point percentage in the NHL over that span. Uh, Some of the highlights over that stretch included uh, an overtime win over the Toronto Maple Leafs on uh, December 1st with uh, Austin Matthews tying things up late, but Brad Marchand scoring in overtime. Uh, They lost to the Sabres, to the Devils, a couple teams that missed the playoffs, beat the Coyotes. Uh, There was a bit of a losing streak here as well. They lost four of five uh, losses to the Devils, Rangers, Wild, Jets, and the wild again leading into the holiday break so they went into christmas on a bit of a down note but came out flying beating the sabers on december 27th then beating the uh devils and detroit red wings in back-to-back games to end 2024 there was no big outdoor game here uh they did uh win their first game of 2024 against the Columbus Blue Jackets, a 4-1 to decision. Uh, they struggled a bit on a West Coast road trip, losing three games in a row in a shootout or overtime to the Colorado Avalanche, the Coyotes, the Vegas Golden Knights. But then they came back home and reeled off four wins in a row, including a 9-4 win over the Montreal Canadiens on January 20th. Uh, they lost a game to Carolina, but then finished January with two straight wins, one over Ottawa, and one over Philadelphia. Apologies there for the background noise. I have a kid in his room playing mini basketball, and then we have our neighbors who have uh, outsourced their lawn care to a company that decided right now would be the time to do that. Now, let's talk about December and January of this upcoming season. And this stretch of the schedule will begin with a very special game on December 1st. Happens to be my birthday. Oh my gosh, I would love to be in town for this one. Not sure if that will be possible, but it will be the official centennial celebration 
It's a sun, Sunday afternoon tilt against the Montreal Canadiens, 100 years to the day of the Bruins' first ever game. It's going to be a memorable day, memorable day on Causeway and um, a game that, yeah, is going to be as must watch as as it gets. Uh, the culmination of the um, centennial celebration that's been going on all season long, all year long. And uh, it's a reminder for me to get down to uh, the Hockey Hall of Fame because they have a um, Boston Bruins centennial exhibit that will uh, be featured until December 1st. Um, it's the second of three Bruins Canadians matchups. And again, it will mark hundred years to the date of the match at the historic Matthews arena against the old Montreal Maroons. I don't know if the Bruins will bust out the centennial jerseys once again for this one, or maybe they'll have something else in store. Uh, maybe the Canadians will wear their Maroons jerseys. That would be pretty cool. But that will be one uh, to circle on your calendar for sure. It's a 3 p.m. start in Boston against the Canadians to mark the official centennial for the Boston Bruins. That is a game to, to be there for if you can. That will be the start of a busy week for the Bruins as they will then host the Detroit Red Wings on Tuesday, December 3rd before traveling to Chicago for a game against Connor Bedard and the Blackhawks on Wednesday, December 4th. That game, of course, will also feature Taylor Hall, if healthy, Nick Foligno, uh, Pat Maroon, and Tyler Bertuzzi, a lot of former Bruins on the Blackhawks this season. That first week will culminate with another matinee, this time against the Philadelphia Flyers on Saturday, December 7th. That will be Boston's uh, second matinee game against the Philadelphia Flyers this season with the game already having been played in Philly uh, back in November. What's next for the Bruins after that? A tough Western Conference road trip, West Coast road, well, kind of. And uh, we'll touch on that here as the podcast continues. Baseball season's in full effect and the Summer Olympics are going. Sports aren't sportsing as much as we like, but there's still a lot of available plays on FanDuel. And right now, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily all summer long. There's something for everyone every day over at FanDuel.com. FanDuel lets you keep the sports going whenever you want. All you have to do is open the app and dream up bets anytime you're in the mood. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. And you can uh, go over there right now and drop some money on the next uh, Red Sox game, which will be uh, played today. And you can put, uh, you know, at plus 4,500 to win the World Series. They have an over-under of 9.5 for their next game, which will be played Friday, July 26th, against the New York Yankees. Go to FanDuel.com for all the information official betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you so much once again for making Locked On Bruins part of your daily routine, free and available on your favorite podcast app and on YouTube. While you're on YouTube, check out Locked On Sports Today. All the latest news, insights, and opinions from across the Locked On universe available 24-7 on YouTube and the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Now, in the month of December, the Bruins will be going on a Canadian-slash-Northwest road trip. Five games beginning in Winnipeg on December 10th to take on the Jets. From there, they go to Seattle to take on the Kraken. 
on Thursday the 12th. Then a game against the Canucks in Vancouver on Saturday the 14th. They'll get a couple days off before traveling to Alberta where they will take on the Flames on Tuesday the 17th and the Oilers in Edmonton on Thursday the 19th. Now that one will be one to watch for sure. The Oilers have had a very successful offseason and remain Stanley Cup hopefuls, if not the favorites. Uh, They made a controversial decision yesterday with the hiring of Stan Bowman as GM. Uh, We don't have to get into that too much, but I'm not a fan of that move allowing him back into the NHL after what happened with the Chicago Blackhawks. But uh, they're going to be a very good team. They've put a bit of a target on their backs unknowingly or knowingly. Uh, And uh, that will certainly be anytime you can watch Connor McDavid play. That is uh, a treat for sure. So the Bruins five game West coast road trip or through Canada, Alberta, Seattle, Uh, All five of those teams should be in playoff contention this season, so that will not be an easy road trip uh, to be sure. They will come home for two games prior to the Christmas break. They will get December 24th, 25th, and 26th off, but not before hosting the Sabres on December 21st and the Capitals on December 23rd. Haven't talked much about the Capitals, but they've made some pretty sneaky good additions over the summer. Uh, You know, adding Logan Thompson in net to balance out Charlie Lindgren. That could be a pretty good goaltending duo. And, uh, of course, they added Pierre-Luc Dubois via trade from the LA Kings. The Bruins, of course, were rumored to be in on him pretty heavily. It's believed that that was the deal that was on the table. Uh, prior to the deadline last year with Linus Allmark going the other way. He, of course, ixnayed that. Uh, but you can get a chance to see what Pierre-Luc Dubois is able to do with his new team. Now the Bruins, again, three days off to end the month of December, but they have three games between the 27th and the 31st to end the 2024 portion of their schedule. Coming out of the holiday break, they actually have a home-and-home back-to-back with the Columbus Blue Jackets. You don't see that very often anymore. Uh, A home-and-home back-to-back on consecutive nights, 7 p.m. Eastern on Friday the 27th in Columbus, and then 7 p.m. Eastern in Boston on Saturday the 28th. Columbus, again, they have a new head coach in Dean Evason. They've got some good young pieces. Uh, probably still in the building phase. And those are games the Bruins should be able to take uh, from Columbus. Now they will end things with a matinee game on New Year's Eve to be played in Washington, a 12.30 p.m. Eastern uh, game, which is kind of interesting to see that, uh, you know, on a, a weekday afternoon. It's not officially a holiday uh but there's a few matinees that day uh i think that could be one of the busiest days on the nhl schedule uh the bruins and capitals play 12 30 p.m and then the islanders leafs at 1 p.m there's the canadians and golden knights at 3 p.m uh you have the winter classic taking place between the St. Louis Blues and the Chicago Blackhawks that day as well. Uh, That will be played. uh, Where is that game being played? I can't even remember. Uh, But uh, that game goes at five. And then you have got a bunch of games later on in the evening. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven games starting at 8 p.m. And a couple 9 p.m. games, including Vancouver, Calgary, Utah, Edmonton. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like twenty-six teams in action on December thirty-first. Only one game on the first, not the Winter Classic. It's New Jersey at Los Angeles. So that's uh, a bit of a wrinkle uh, this year. Not quite sure why they don't have that game going on the first instead of the thirty-first, the Winter Classic. But there it is. 
So that's how the Bruins will round out the 2024 portion of the schedule. What about um, what about January? How does January look for the Bruins? We'll discuss that here as the podcast continues. Hopefully, after a successful start to the season, the Bruins will begin the January schedule with a couple road games and tough ones at that. They will be in New York to take on the Rangers on Thursday, January 2nd, and then in Toronto on the 4th to take on the Toronto Maple Leafs. From there, they come home, host the Islanders, host the Oilers. That will be a game to circle on the calendar for sure. Uh, The Bruins taking on Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, and the Edmonton Oilers at home. Uh, So that's definitely a game you want to schedule. Uh, Again, the Bruins will be in Edmonton on December 19th to cap that five-game road trip. And then McDavid and the Oilers make their only visit to Boston for the second game of a quick two-game homestand there for the Bruins. Again, they start in New York, go to Toronto, come home for those two games against the Islanders and Oilers, and then off to Florida for a Thursday game against the lightning and a Friday, sorry, Saturday afternoon tilt with the Panthers down in Florida. After that game, they come right home and play the lightning on the 14th, get a few days off before going to Ottawa to take on the senators on the 18th. And then they end the month with six games over the last uh, 10 days or so. They host the San Jose Sharks on January 20th. They have a back-to-back situation going to New Jersey to take on the Devils on the 22nd, home to host the Senators on the 23rd, uh, matinee game on the 25th against the Colorado Avalanche, then to Buffalo to take on the Sabres on the 28th, and then they finish up January with a game against the Jets at home on January 30th. So that's what December and January look like for the Boston Bruins this upcoming season. The highlights will be those two games against the Edmonton Oilers, to be sure. Those will be big measuring stick games. The Oilers are, of course, um, Stanley Cup favorites. This will also be the time in which they have one of their longest road stretches, that five game road trip to Winnipeg, Seattle, Vancouver, Calgary, and Edmonton is tied for the longest road trip of the season. They'll also have a five gamer later on in uh, March. Uh, There's a few back to backs in here as well. And those are always kind of murky to navigate because again, with, uh, Linus Allmark out of the mix. You're going to have to rely on Eunice Corposalo in one of those games. And can't stress enough how much they need him to be an effective goaltender here in order to um, to maintain their competitive advantage in uh, in the upcoming season. We still do not have a contract for Jeremy Swayman. Uh, we hope that comes very, very soon. Uh, They need him to um, be signed, sealed, delivered, comfortable, feeling the love, and um, yeah, just feeling good. Coming into this upcoming season, uh, breaking news from Philadelphia where Travis Konechny has signed an eight-year contract extension with an average annual value of $8.75 million. Doesn't really affect the Bruins too much. But um, the Flyers locking up some players and they're going to be competitive this upcoming season, to be sure. Uh, We'll see if they have any any other moves in the bag because it's quite possible they could make a deal with the Buffalo Sabres as – Perhaps Joel Farabee is expendable there now. I've heard a lot of rumors of uh, Farabee for Peyton Krebs, 
which could be interesting as well. Anyways, that's a look at December and January for the Boston Bruins. On uh, tomorrow's podcast, we'll look at February and uh, discuss the Four Nations Cup. Uh, today, of course, is the one-year anniversary of Patrice Bergeron retiring. Still can't believe he is done. Uh, I believe he would have been super effective last season, uh, but we wish him all the best on retirement and would absolutely love to have him jump on the podcast at some point. Uh, just throwing that into the universe and hoping that uh, may become a reality at some point. All right, that's it, friends. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen. Please do take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and uh, we'll talk to you here on the next episode of Locked On Boston Bruins, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your favorite team every single day.